for a morning show. Yeah. How hard is that, like, in the back of your mind, do you think of, like, damn, man, like, the salary is good, and I'm enjoying it, and I love what I do, but it may be ending. So you ever feel yeah. that way? Like, yeah, yeah. Is you it always, hard to, like, live yeah, like Yeah, you always got to, you always, you got to, you got to look at it like that, that, that it could end, and you could be, you could be moving on. That's just the nature of it. I think um, Hot 97 for me was my decision. I left. Mm. Um, I left because at the time they wouldn't. Uh, my son is on the phone. Hold on, let me let, right. me, let me get, let me get, look at him. Zaire, yeah. what, I'm podcasting, bro. I'm gonna call you back. Oh, my bad. All right, later. All right, peace. <laughs> my boy. <laughs> That's um, classic. It's uh, shout to Zaire. Hot 97 didn't. Did, yeah, shout out to Z. It didn't hurt because I left because they wouldn't guarantee my contract. I have been working on a guaranteed contract for a lot of years. What does that mean for people? Who are... That means I get my money no matter what happens. Okay, for like how many years they signed it for? Uh, two years, three years. Okay. You know, and they um, wouldn't, you know why and they wouldn't guarantee I don't know. It was they, at this point, they had let Dre go. Um, and then I was about to re sign, and I was like, okay, it's got to be guaranteed because if y'all change the format, or whatever happens, I need to know I'm getting paid. Sure, absolutely. It doesn't matter. I'm like, I feel like I'm a basketball player. I need a guaranteed deal, right? So they wouldn't do it. So I went to LA. LA gave me a guaranteed deal. And then I stayed in LA for a little over well, I had a two year deal in LA and I stayed in LA um until they sold a damn station. And then Radio One bought it and then bought in Steve Harvey, but they still had to honor my contract. I had another year left on my deal. Mm -hmm. And then I came back to power and I had another guarantee. Yeah. That one hurt me. Yeah, why? Because I put that station, I gave that station integrity. Absolutely. They were jamming 105. They mm -hmm. were an old school Luther Vandross yep. playing, and they brought us back for integrity, and I gave them the integrity that they needed, the integrity that they wanted, the integrity that they had to have in order to make a mark in New York City. And I worked my ass off for Power 105. And to be unceremoniously let go for no other reason than they kept saying, and uh, Cadillac Jack McCartney was a program director there. Yeah. And we would have meetings, and he was like, we got to get younger, we got to get younger. And I'm like, Jack, I can't get no younger, bro. I am what I am. What does my numbers reflect? We're never out of the top five. What's the problem? But after a while, I found out what it really was. It, it was a downturn in the market. And I hate to say it, people, you know, I keep it 100% real. The black man who was making $800,000 a year had to go. Sure. But Elvis Duran is older than me, but he can yeah. still sit at Z100 and talk to 12 plus every day, and I can't talk to 18 to 34. Yeah. And then you brought in the breakfast club. You implemented everything that I said to you. Mm. Everything that I told you about putting cameras in the studio, now you do for the breakfast club. And nothing against them because Charlemagne always speaks with respect and admiration for me, and I have the same for him. Mm. Nothing against Angela Yee, nothing against Envy, nothing against Charlemagne. But collectively, I don't know what they make now. Collectively, when they first started, they weren't making collectively what I was making by myself. Sure. And it's just fucked up that you could see the trend and what was going on, and I didn't have an opportunity to say goodbye to the audience after I'd been there since you flipped the station. I got escorted out of the building like I wasn't shit. Yeah. That hurt my feelings. I that hurt. I sat with G Spin. Yeah, G Spin's my man. And I remember G Spin telling me, and, and, and I'll tell you, I, I know G Spin for a while, but one thing I could see is that that dude uh, is very heartfelt. Yeah. That shit, he explained. I wish I got to find that clip, but he explained how that hurt him. That he came, you, you, he came, was coming up to Ville, you were walking out, and he's, yeah. he's and, 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 and you're looking at him, and he's like, that's not the way it should have went That's down, right. You know? They didn't even let me clean out my office. They boxed all my stuff up and sent it to my house. Like, they had... So why would the, they... Why they would had they, the... I, I don't know. Like, I don't understand why I why a lot of times we get this thing like we're going to explode, like I'm going to fuck something up or whatever. Like, the, oh, get the black man out of the building. I felt like shit, man. And I have never... This is the first time I've ever... I've told this story before, but it's the first time I've expressed how it really hurt me as a human, man. Because... Power 105 ain't shit without me and Dre mm. coming back to that station. Mm. It ain't shit. They're not where you are right now. You're not making the moves that you're making right now. And to just be that nasty and disrespectful, to take my key card, to escort me out of the building, you, I understand now why some people go postal. Mm. Because you put your heart and soul into a company that doesn't have their heart and soul 
inside you. Sure. When you ask me, do I think it's a good idea for you to bring Star and Buck Wild to Power 105? And I said, sure, sure. I'll go to afternoons, but you made sure that you kept me under contract for afternoons and mornings, right? When I brought Oprah to the damn radio station, mm. the first time she'd ever done terrestrial radio, happened? Jamie Foxx has always been my dude. I did the Jamie Foxx show. Jamie has been my dude from when I lived in L.A. for a long time. Jamie came up, and Oprah had this thing with her that she didn't like hip-hop. Remember, she had yeah, kind of yeah, yeah, like, yeah. when they did Crash, she froze Ludacris out yeah, of the interview. Yeah. Um, she didn't interview Ice Cube for some reason. But she was getting ready to do her Legends thing, her Legends television show and all of that stuff. And Jamie was on the show, and I said, Jamie, you cool with Oprah and Gayle King, right? And he said, yeah. I said, tell Oprah to come through. Like, she needs to sit down and, and tell his audience about how she really feels. And he was like, yeah, I'll do that. And then one day, <laughs> unfortunately, my cousin had gotten killed and I left. I was in the afternoons then at Star Buck Wilds in the morning. And I left to go to early to go to his uh, wake and his funeral. And I get a call. My assistant at the time, my man D, gets the call and said, man, y'all got to come back here. Oprah's here. And I'm like, man, fuck out of here. Oprah, man, you believe that shit? D, hang up. They was playing, right? And they called back again and said, nah, man, Oprah Winfrey is here looking for Ed. And we were about four blocks away from the uh, radio station. I just jumped out, ran back to the station. I told D, bring the car back around, man, put it back in the garage. And I got there, the whole, like, lobby of the building we were in was going crazy. And everybody was like, yeah, Oprah Winfrey just went upstairs. She had one security guy downstairs with an earpiece in his ear. And I got upstairs, and yeah, sitting there in the green room was Oprah. And she's like, where you at? I've been looking for you. What the and, fuck? And I was were, you, like, were you like, yo, this is crazy. I was like, yo, this is crazy. And I went in the studio.